Hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy, AJ Tripp. And welcome to The Game According to Me, my weekly podcast where we go over what happened this past week in sports. We're going to look at the college football playoff rankings last week in college football, last week in NFL, and preview this week in college football and this week in the NFL. So let's go ahead and let's get it started. So as always, let's start with college football. The playoff rankings came out last night. The majority stayed the same. Georgia's one, Ohio State's two, Michigan is three, TCU is four. And what you really need to know about is Tennessee at nine and one is five, LSU is eight and two and six, and South Carolina, Southern California, excuse me, is at nine, is at seven at nine and one. Alabama and Alabama at eight and two and Clemson at nine and one is eight and nine, and Utah at eight and two is ten. Oregon having a loss to Washington dropped down to twelve. But really, this is all about the policy because the the six. The, excuse me, the seven teams are the teams that really pretty much have a chance of making the playoffs. I don't think Alabama and Clemson are going to make it, even if the, there has to be tons of chaos for that to happen. I don't think we're going to get tons of, tons of chaos. Uh, Tennessee only has a chance. Someone drops out. Uh, we've got the Ohio State-Michigan game coming up, although Ohio State-Michigan have games this week that they need to get by. Uh, there's always the Southern California, you know, so Southern, yeah, I call him Southern California, you know. Okay, yeah, Southern California needs to have some need some help. Probably needs, probably needs four of the six teams ahead of them, uh, ahead of them to lose at least once, so that they can jump up. And then of course they have to run the table themselves. So, but I don't know if any of all of that's going to happen. So, but this is some 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 same thing as last week with the college football playoff rankings. Um. Gotta gotta love root for TCU. Gotta root for TCU. Paul Paul Feinbaum was on first take earlier, and you know he's just saying that they don't have a chance of even making the playoffs. Well, no, they do. They will make the playoffs if they go thirteen and zero. They will make the playoffs. Paul Feinbaum is there's one of the things wrong with Paul Feinbaum. He's way way too much into the SEC and doesn't give he doesn't give any teams in the other conferences a chance. So. Um, so as much, as much as he knows about college football, sometimes he can be very short-sighted in that effect. So, so as we transfer now or segue from the college football rankings to what happened last week in college football, it was a pretty uneventful day for the most part. Uh, and it kind of comes with college football last Saturday. Um, as we look at here, we'll actually start – We'll actually start with um, Friday uh, as East Carolina lost to Cincinnati 27-25. to uh, And USC beat Colorado 55-17. to Now we transfer to Saturday. Ohio State beat Indiana 56-14. to Took care of business there. LSU had some problems with Arkansas, but most likely they came out with the win. Got the golden boot. 13 to 10. Notre Dame beat Navy. They it was a this is a close score was a lot closer than it really should have been. But for some reason Notre Dame just let these guys come back in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame beat Navy 35-32. Tennessee beat Missouri 66 to 24. Clemson beat Louisville 31 to 16. Penn State shut out the Maryland Terrapins 30 to nothing. Oklahoma State beat Iowa State 20 to 14. Nebraska that Blown out by Michigan, thirty-four to three. Alabama slipped by Mississippi. Another one-score uh, game. Alabama has played in unreal, thirty to twenty-four. UCF beat Tulane, thirty-one, thirty-eight to thirty-one. Georgia put a whooping on Mississippi State, forty-five to nineteen. Of course, the upset we talked about. Washington beat Oregon, thirty-seven to thirty-four. Kansas State beat Baylor, thirty-one to three. North Carolina. Slipped by Wake Forest, 36 34 North Carolina, if they want if they want to be taken seriously, they're gonna to have to start beating teams like their like their their uh, their components in the ACC, like like Clemson, you know, unlike Florida State. Florida State beat Syracuse, 38 to three. Oregon State beat California, 38 to 10. Utah beat Stanford forty two to seven. Still boggles my mind. How did Notre Dame lose to Stanford? I just I do not know. And UCLA 
lost to Arizona 34 to 28. Now, if you look ahead to this upcoming week, tomorrow night is a great game, SMU versus Tulane. And then we go to the Saturday's action, Navy. Takes on the 17th ranked UCF Knights. The fourth ranked TCU takes on Baylor. This is again, this is another another chance for TCU to prove people like Paul Feinbaum wrong. That they have what it takes to win in this game. Illinois is at number three. Michigan. This game, because Illinois has lost their last two games, it's a lot less interesting than it originally thought it was going to be. You thought maybe you're going to have a one loss, uh, Illinois, coming into Michigan. Um, but it, I would think now this is probably just going to be another loss on Illinois' terms. So that's unfortunate. Really, when maybe was kind of hoping for an upset here, some chaos. Illinois beat Michigan. Michigan beats Ohio State. You know, something like that. We have to wait and see. That maybe, that maybe that can still happen, but I, I don't know. Um, Florida State's at, uh, no, no, actually Louisiana, excuse me, is at Florida State. Austin P is at Alabama. Now, here's the deal right here. Right? Both Florida State and Alabama, uh, I'm guessing, is uh, are doing their homecoming games. Florida State, they're doing Louisiana. At, at least it's a team in the FBS. Alabama is doing Austin P, and this is the shit that kind of just makes me it kind of turns my stomach because Alabama should not be playing any FCS teams. They shouldn't be. Not for their homecoming game. Not for the start to get start the year. They never should play it. Power five teams in the Power Five conferences shouldn't play FCS teams. That's what I would say. They should never do it. And even though we won't get things like uh, Appalachian State was beating Michigan. Something like that anymore. But we we we're about to go to a 12 team playoff and Alabama's gonna put have Austin P on their on their, you know, records. Listen, Florida State that's no better for Louisiana. But at least it's a team in the FBS. You know, you know my thing. I think if you play a team that's not in the Power Five Conference. And you and you are you are a team in the Power Five Conference. You play them on the road always, but that's neither here nor there. Nineteen Kansas State Wildcats taking on West Virginia. The twenty fifth ranked Oregon State Beavers takes on Arizona State. Boston College is at Notre Dame for their homecoming day. That's how you do it. Coastal Carolina and Virginia has been canceled. Obviously, earlier this week, three members of the Virginia football team were shot. And murdered by uh, a guy who was apparently on the on on the uh, on the uh, field trip with them was was uh, was accompanied by the teacher. Teacher asked him to come along, and he did. And he shot three members of the football team. Another a fourth another, another member another fourth member of the team was shot, but he has been um, in the hospital. He has a couple of surgeries. He seems to be okay, and he's going to make it. And a young girl was also shot as well. It's just a total tragedy, and one of the things that just really just it just well, it just sickens me, and um, and if and, and I would say this if if you know I no, normally just try to keep this towards sports, but if you voted Democrat, this in this past election, and there was no big wet rave that was predicted, if you voted Democrat, thank you. Because maybe we're just one step closest for not having things like this happen. Three young men losing their lives to senseless gun violence. 11 ranked picks Penn State and the Lions will be at Rutgers. The 9th ranked Clemson Tigers hosts Miami of Florida. Georgia is at Kentucky. Ohio State is at Maryland. Cincinnati is at Temple. North Carolina is hosting Georgia Tech. Tennessee will be at South Carolina. Bedlam happens this week. Oklahoma State at Oklahoma. Mississippi is at Arkansas. USC versus UCLA. I believe it's the Victory Bell. It's happening at 8 o'clock. LSU taking on University of Alabama Birmingham once again. Uh, it's a a, a uh, homecoming game, I would believe, but again, and, and 
I made my mistake, but at least again, they're fixing the team in the FBS and not in the FCS. Washington takes on Colorado, and Utah is at Oregon. That is it for the college football. We now go to the NFL, but once again, I want to send my thoughts out to the members of the Virginia Cavaliers football team, the, the Charlottesville community, and of course the family and friends of the three young men we lost earlier this week. Rest in power. And now let's turn to the National Football League. Last week, to last Thursday, Falcons at the Panthers. Panthers won 25 to 15. This is, uh, most people said it was a horrible game. Eh, I can't argue with them. <laughs> um, but uh, it's just in, in, incredible what this. this Mar Mar Marcus Mariota was like, he was being tackled and still trying to throw the ball down the field. I don't know what he was thinking. I really don't. Um, on the Sunday, in the morning, we had the Buccaneers and the Seahawks. Buccaneers won 26 16. Uh, the most memorable play is going to be talked about <laughs> is the they ran a, a version of the Wildcat where Leonard Fournette ran the ball, and it came back like three or four plays later in the same formation, and then they had Leonard Fournette throw the ball. <laughs> he was throwing it to Tom Brady. Tom Brady slipped. It was intercepted by Tariq Woolen, uh, his fifth in the year. Unfortunately, Seahawks could not do anything with it. They drove down the field, and then Geno Smith fumbled in the red zone. We got to get, get the ball back to Tampa Bay, and it, the pregame was pretty much over after that. But that's going to be what everybody was talking about from that game. The first game in Germany, Seahawks uh, and the Buccaneers. Buccaneers win 21-16. Uh, a very exciting game at Soldier Field. Uh, came down to the last quarter. Uh, unfortunately, missed extra point. Does it for the Lions. Lions win 31 to 30. Justin Fields, another long Thursday run, this time of 67 yards, and had two rushing and two passing touchdowns. Uh, he seems to be getting um, better, and he, and he was more willing to scramble to throw the ball and not scramble to run. To run. But still, I, I still feel that I want, my, I want my quarterback to be a quarterback and not to be a running back. So, um, but you have to say that he is getting the, he is improving and uh, and uh, I guess that's something like this and it's exciting. A lot of Bears fans are excited. I'm not excited. But I would be excited if they were winning. They're not winning. So what can you say? Dolphins beat the Browns 39 to 17. Another great day for Tua passing and just just incredible. Dolphins have taken over the lead because the Vikings beat the Bills in overtime 33 to 30. Josh Allen with two costly turnovers at the once at the end of the game when he when he uh when he fumbled the ball at the back of the goal line recovered by the Vikings for a touchdown he may have drove them down the field and had them kick the tying field goal but then after the Vikings got the ball in overtime and drove down to keep the field goal he drove down and threw another red zone interception to Patrick Peterson Josh Allen is just not playing well at this time and I would say that he is probably choking he's choking under the pressure of having to you know be lead a team that is that that. A lot of people pick to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl in those four falls of Buffalo that happened in the 90s. You know, trying to survive on all of that. And he seems to be, you know, trying to do too much and do it all. And I think he just needs to... In the beginning of the season, he was taking what the people were getting. And sure, he was still he was still getting the long throws and the, special, the spectacular throws. But he was also, you know... T Taking the ball down the field, methodically moving the ball, taking what the defense gave him, hitting the finding the right play in the right zone. He's not doing it right now, and uh, he needs to get better. Um, because right now at six and three, this, the playoffs started. They would be the seventh seed. They would not play at home at all. So he needs to do better than that. By the way, and, and besides that, the Minnesota Vikings uh, just goes on at eight and one, nine and one right now, and they are like, and they, I would say that they are probably the best team in the NFL after the Vikings, after the Eagles lost some money like football. The Vikings are the number one team in the NFC, and uh, and it's time, it's time to give 
Kirk Cousins some respect. Put some respect on that man's name. He is a damn good quarterback. And just because he doesn't do it like Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes or or Brady or Rodgers would used to do, doesn't mean he's not he's not good. It doesn't mean he can't win your Super Bowl. I will tell you something right now. The, the Bills start to to you know slink by. I'm, 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 the Vikings keep riding riding up on my list, and I'm starting to not root for the Vikings just so that Kirk Cousins can get his fucking flowers. Uh, the Titans beat the Broncos 17 to 10. Another loss uh, for <laughs> Russell Wilson and the Broncos. I I did not think that you know they would you know Denver would you know would he they would get rid of Paul Hackett or whatever Hackett. Uh, uh, you know, after one season, but maybe they might actually do it because the break the Broncos don't seem to be doing anything, doing anything, you know, to you know get the job done. And some of some people who are not getting the job done maybe one and done. How about the Raiders? Raiders lost to the Colts twenty five to twenty. Jeff Saturday's first uh, coaching job was a successful one. Put back in Matt Ryan. He played. He had a he had a Justin Fields type run, ran for thirty eight yards, and the Vikings once again the, you know, the Vikings the Raiders once again had a lead and lost it. And uh, Derek Carr after the end just so emotional at the game. Uh, it sounds like there's, there's not a lot of people in that locker room that are you know giving it his all while everybody else is giving it his all. Some people are wondering is he talking about Hunter Renfro or or Darren Waller who have been. On the injured list, and you know, something like that. Was he talking about the coach, or who knows who he's talking about? But uh, very emotional out of the game was Derek Carr. And and uh, and out of the game, this Saturday was he. It was a different type of emotional. It was yes. So um, the Giants beat the Texans twenty-four to sixteen. The Giants just keep rolling on. They just just keep winning. It's all they just do. They just, all they do is win, 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 no matter what. That's all they do. Jaguars lost to the Chiefs 27-17. Some of the teams that keep winning and winning. The Chiefs keep doing it. The Steelers shocked the Saints 20-10. to um, Don't know what's going down in there. I saw some stuff on TikTok where there's the radio shows. It's probably going crazy that, um, you know, James Allen may be lying to him about Jimmy Swinson and is Jimmy Swinson healthy or not. So I don't know what's going on down in there. Cardinals stave off uh, 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 another loss. New stave off the execution of Cliff Kingsbury another week. They beat the Rams 27-17 as both backup quarterbacks played in this game. Matthew Stafford had COVID. Is that what it was? Matthew Stafford had COVID and Kyler Murray uh, was out with an ankle injury. Uh, Cooper Cup in that in that game unfortunately also received injury, hurt the ankle even more than before. It has to have surgery on it. He is put on the injury list. He will be out for four Weeks at least. Packers shocked the Cowboys in overtime, thirty-one to twenty-eight. Um, Packers did more of a run-based offense, and uh, and uh, but they still had three passing touchdowns from uh, Aaron Rodgers to Christian Watson. Maybe this is Christian Watson's breakout game. And, uh, and the Cowboys they had a twenty-four fourteen lead. They were a hundred and ninety-five and zero with. Uh, you know, in games where they led in the fourth quarter by 14 points, and they that was their first loss. Amazing. Sunday night, the 49ers beat the Chargers 22 and 16. They seem to be on track, and like we mentioned earlier, the undefeated team is no more undefeated. The Commanders beat the Eagles 32 to 21. Uh. You wondered if they were what team they were going to lose to, and it was just, it was just the Commanders. And now every team in the NFC East is at least five hundred or better. Again, amazing. As we head to what's coming up this week in the NFL tomorrow night, the Titans are at the Packers. Short week for the Titans and the Packers uh, should be a very interesting game. Even though both, uh, even though uh, the Titans are should be are particularly playing better than the Packers, but we'll see if this new style offense that the Packers are doing will will, will slow down the Titans. You know, uh, go to Sunday's action, Bears and the Falcons. Falcons have been a pretty interesting team. The Bears last three or four weeks have scored over 30 points. Justin Fields is going incredible. This is Justin Fields' hometown. We'll see if, what, if Justin Fields improves even more. Can he, can he improve passing? Or will he now run for over 200 yards in his home state? 
we'll have to, in, in home city. We'll have to wait and see. Um, the Eagles are at the Colts. The, the Eagles, this is a bad thing for Chip Saturday because now the Eagles, now losing, right, are now, are they going to lose two in a row? I doubt it. And But the coach should, they, uh, Jeff Saturday is going to have his team ready, and they're going to have his team ready to play. Uh, I, I trust that. Um, but it's going to be an interesting game. I, but I don't know if there's not going to be enough. I think the Eagles are still going to, you know, wrap it up for them. Jets at the Patriots. Um, also happening Sunday, Commanders at the Texans, Rams are at the Saints, Browns at the Bills. This is another thing you need to know, you need to know, um, you need to do, excuse me, with Josh Allen. This is another team that you should beat. Don't beat yourself. Don't make, don't turn the ball over, play within the offense, and you should still beat this team handily. You know, uh, you are Way better team than the Browns. So come on, Josh Allen. I know you can do this. Let's get this done. Panthers are at the Ravens. The Lions are at the Giants. The, Ryan, the Lions on a two-game winning streak. They're looking to get back, believe it or not, in the playoff picture. You know, at this uh, with this game, can they win another road game on the road, or will the Giants continue their streak of this this unbelievable? gameplay and they're at home so I think the Giants are going to win that one. Raiders at the Broncos uh, this this could be for both their jobs. <laughs> this could be for Josh McDonald's job. This could be for Hackett's job. Nathaniel Hackett and I said oh, I said Paul Hackett. I think that's his father. Nathaniel Hackett. So this is going to be for see who Maybe loses their job first. <laughs> the Cowboys at the Vikings. This is gonna be interesting. The Cowboys have to get back on track. So the Cowboys have to get back on track after losing to Green Bay. But the Vikings need to keep their thing continue. What's going to happen? Who's going? Who's going to make the first mistake? I got the Vikings in this one. I think the Vikings are looking to you know prove something, prove something big time that they are. The number one team in the NFC, and they're the team to beat, even though the Eagles beat them earlier in the season. The Bengals at the Steelers. That should be an interesting one. Sunday night football, the Chiefs are at the Chargers. Um, that's you know, Chargers second, second consecutive time on Sunday night football. That should be something to look forward to. And then Monday night football, I believe this is from Mexico City. It's the 49ers and the Cardinals. So for for listen. Cardinals are trying to win to keep from getting uh, Cliff Kingsbury fired, <laughs> the third coach to be fired in the middle of the season. Um, but the 49ers are looking at bigger things. So I think that's what you you have to do. So, uh, yeah, I think the 49ers are going to win that one. And uh, that's, this is going to be a very interesting week in the National Football League. As uh, I think now we're heading down the path to where some things could start get rolling for some other teams that maybe were disappointing at the uh, at the start. Maybe there might be, uh, um, you know, getting getting back on track, and maybe just also where you start to eliminate the contenders from the pretenders. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of that to sh- uh, not that to shoot for the game according to me. Please, wherever you are listening to this podcast, uh, please rate the podcast, like the podcast, subscribe to the podcast. So uh, during the football season, we do this every week. And when we get to, to after football season, we do it once a month. Uh, this is your first time listening to it. Also, if you this is your first time listening to it or whatever the time you're listening to it, you say, hey, I think I like this. I like this guy. I want to know what I can do to, to, to support him. Well, you can do what I just said about, you know, subscribing and rating this podcast and wherever you're listening to it. But there's also two other ways you can do it. You can go to patreon.com slash AJ Trip to become a patron. Once I hit a certain amount of patrons, you will be able to determine what you will see on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash AJ Trip. What you will hear on my other podcast, The Word According to Me. Or what you will see on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash AJ Trip to 20. I have to have the video games. You can play, but you select the video game, and I will play it. Oh, and there's also Anchor.fm slash Under Triple Show, where this podcast is being hosted. You also can subscribe there. Three tiers, $0.99, cent, $4.99, cent, and $9.99. Cent. 
So, many ways to support monetarily and non-monetarily. Whatever you figure out the way to, to, to support is okay with me. I just, I'm just happy that you are listening to this. And again, it, it, it's, it's an honor to do this. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is your boy, AJ Tripp, signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.